So are we really about to sit up here and act like this is not Goodfellas? This movie is giving off Goodfellas all day long. It's like, Martin, did you even try? You have Martin, you know, Scorsese films and all these, uh, like, great things, great productions, all this variety. And then you have Goodfellas in Casino. This is Goodfellas. Reimagine. Goodfellas the remix. Welcome back to my channel. It's Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss Casino. Now this movie is from 1995. It stars Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, Sharon Stone, everybody here. Now before I get into this epic Martin Scorsese film, I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to do that and then we're gonna come back and discuss all things trash, trash. Everybody who was trash. Like, if you need any opportunity to see some good mafia, Irish, organized crime realness, Martin Scorsese is a dude. He brings it all to life. It's all glamorized. You almost, after you watch this film, you just want to, you know, just want to whack somebody. You know what I'm saying? Just whack them. Whack them and throw them in a hole. Now that you guys have hopefully subscribed to more of me, let's get into this video. Now before we jump into the movie, I have to give a shout out to the person who paid for and requested this movie. So if you happen, I hope you do, to get your in life watching this review, it's not because of me, it's because of this person right here. Thank you so much for supporting me and paying for this content. You are appreciated. Now, since this is a Martin Scorsese film, you know that this has to be grounded in reality. This movie is based on a true character of Frank Lefty Rosenthal. He reigned in the 70s running casinos that were controlled by the mafia, whole ass organized crime. Now, Martin Scorsese himself, he is a beloved director. And to me, he always kind of had like that same Spike Lee aesthetic about his films. Not that they're the same, but that they do everything to the T. We always see the same actors. They use the same screenwriters, editors, cinematographers in every single film. And it gives them this unison film, even though each film is individually different. But all of his work is very brilliant. It's unmistakable. You're always gonna get, you know, the mafia, some Italians, some Irishmen, some organized crime. They're always gonna be a bit long, but at the end of the day, they are good. His films sometimes feel like a continuation. Now, in watching the film, I was having a really good time with the film, as I normally do. I enjoy this movie, but I couldn't help but compare the two. This movie is like run-of-the-mill Goodfellas, and it doesn't help that we have Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro in the leads. Now, they weren't both leads in Goodfellas, and you know, it wasn't the same, but they have such a strong presence there in the whole, you know, mafia organized crime crime bosses the fact that whole thing is just very much you know the irate wife and you know people being set up there is you know there are different things here in different editions but it virtually feels kind of like the same movie now getting into the movie as soon as it starts we get into that iconic shot of robert de niro ace 
Sam walk into the car in that hot pink flamingo suit at which it explodes, informing us that he is dead and we are getting narration from him on his part, as well as Joe Pesci, Nikki, before things went wrong. You know, should have been perfect, but we fucked it all up. We get into 10 years ago and how the entire Vegas Strip is designed for people like Sam, designed to be flashy, you know, those bright lights. It's all about the money, the excess, all to pull the consumer in. Las Vegas is one big scam at this point. We are in the 70s. As long as the bosses, Palms agrees, and they are getting their money on the back end, you have the free will to run and operate a casino any way you want to. And this new position is being bestowed upon our new friend, Sam, who has no experience in running a casino, does not even have a proper license. So far throughout his entire life, he has just been good at numbers, playing the numbers, whether it's been, you know, betting on the horses, card games, football games, anything where you can shake some dice and roll them. He knows how to, you gotta know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk. He knows, he knows when to hold them, when to fold them. Now, when we have Ace here, who is very much so the brains of the operation, we also have an entirely different perspective from Nikki, portrayed here by Joe Pesci. Now, Nikki is the enforcer, the collector, the mouth, the muscle, and also there to protect Sam. He's the murderer. <laughs> Unlike Sam, he does not mind at all getting his hands dirty. Though it's against Ace's better judgment, the bosses have made the decision. You're going to be working with Nikki. He's going to, you know, be handling the dirty work, enforcing, following instructions, greasing palms, making sure deals are set where you can't. He is the enforcer. You are the brains. What could go wrong? We get into Sylvia. Yes, Mickey. How do you call your lover boy? Come here, lover boy. And if he doesn't answer, I simply say, baby. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, baby. Mm -mm -mm. My sweet baby. Mm -mm -mm. You're the one. Got real dirty dancing when we got introduced to Ginger. Now, Ginger here, portrayed by Sharon Stone, this is a whole underrated role from her. Like, Sharon Stone does such a good job here. This is a three hour film and she transitions and goes through so many emotions in that small amount of time. She does really great here. Now, Ginger is a beautiful, blonde, loud, materialistic, impulsive scammer. He literally meets her and it's love at first sight. It's all about the money for her, what you can get her, buy her, she is very much Cassidy. She said, I'm a hustler. I'm a, I'm a hustler, homie. I got dimes and bags for the customers, homie. Ginger is a top-notch hustler. And just like him, she runs everything like a fine oiled machine. However, her weakness just happens to be James Wood here with the porno mustache. So even though Ginger said, I'm a finesse and I'm a fly dresser, like it was very much giving. I am that girl. She is good with her words, quick with her hands, good on her feet. She's, you know, a hot ass mess, but nobody can see that right away. She is uplifted in Vegas. She is celebrated. She is adorned. Everybody wants and loves a good Ginger. But Lester, that grip that Lester had on her was very much giving you know, pimp maybe got high on his own supply. Wasn't quite what he used to be, but he still had his hooks and maybe his first legit bottom bitch and she was just holding on to every inch of his words. It was just quite sick to look at. And it was just like, girl, no. But that didn't matter because at that point, everyone just loves them some ginger. She's gorgeous. Who doesn't want her? Everybody loves her. Even Nikki. Nikki loves ginger too. 
Now, both Niggy and Ginger spell trouble for Ace, but we don't see that right away and neither does he. Now, even though Ginger has, you know, all of her little quirks, Lester and whatnot, Nikki, on the other hand, is the complete opposite of Sam. He wants to keep a low profile and just run a legit, you know, ripoff <laughs> of a casino and keep those bosses happy. Nikki wants in on all the action. He wants to shake people down from the pimps to the bookies, all that. But whether he likes it or not, he needs Nikki at this point, and so do the bosses. Nikki is there to handle the undesirable ass moment. You know, all of that, you motherfucker, like goddamn Joe Pesci. And I know people like myself, I love to, you know, jump on someone like, oh my God, you give us the same delivery, that same character. Nine times out of 10, when we get Joe Pesci in a Martin Scorsese film, he is typecast as this one character. You're gonna get like, he, he it could just be different movies and it's just that same, you motherfucker. Like he's always the aggressor. You must, he's like ti little tiny Tim of an aggressor. He's aggressive. He's, you know, irrational. He's abusive. He's cra He is just a hot fucking mess. And it's the same, you motherfuckers fast talking no i'm serious now no i'll attack you i will eat you alive like a rabbit fucking dog break your kneecaps your eyebrows your pinky toe and your left temple just because i fucking feel like it you motherfucker and then i'm gonna make get my mom to make me some fucking italian me but like it's the same every time but we love it every time and it's so good to watch it's sad like i was like this is the same character every single time but we let it go because it's joe pesci and that mother you motherfucker i'm fucking like it's it's good it's good it's just it's good now everything is running in tip-top shape up until the point that the team starts to break down a little bit and mistakes start to happen like ace wanting to marry ginger and turn a hoe into a housewife no way ginger is a temporary good time she's a fun girl not wife material she even says so herself she knows who she is i'm not the marrying type i'm not the mother type i'm not maternal i'm about the money i don't even love you i don't see you in that way i don't want you i want to have a good time you can spend some racks on me buy me some jewelry or some shit i can just go on my way why would you want to marry me what is wrong with you but no he is just so goddamn smitten with her just just dumb like dumb and wants to marry her regardless of what she has to say because deep in his mind like oh my gosh she's incredible he loves that feisty bad bitch irrational ass energy that she gives off. I'm gonna marry her, I'm gonna treat her well, there's nothing I won't do for her, and you know, she's gonna learn to love me and everything is gonna be okay. We're gonna have kids, everything will fall into place, I can change Ginger. Uh, no. Even down to the point of them having their first daughter and her agreeing to the marriage, under the falsehood of you know if anything happens in our marriage and you know because you know ginger's not a stupid girl you know what, what's gonna happen to me if we get divorced what's gonna happen to me what's gonna happen to me well you know i'm gonna take care of you everything's gonna be okay i will take care of you for the rest of your life you will be fucking set lies Meanwhile, they've just fucking walked down the aisle five minutes ago and the first person that she decides to call is Lester for comfort and confirmation because she feels guilty she's walking away. She has tied to a whole nother man, which she knows, he knows her lifestyle. She's a finesse, she's a fly dresser slash city girl. You know what this is, you know who she is, but you married her, you did this. You did it to yourself, you did it to yourself. And then of course we have to get into even more stupidity on Ace's part, dealing 
with Ginger. Now, even though she doesn't, you know, love me, I can still buy her affections. Even though she doesn't care for him, she is still indulging in every access that he has to offer. From money, to diamonds, chinchilla, furs, suits, trips, he is trying his best just to buy her and even gives her access to funds, stashes, accounts. He put her name on the accounts, y'all, to instill trust. I'm trusting you with my life. Your name is on this box. This is $2 million in emergency money just in case something happens to me. I'm giving you the key to it and your name is on it to have access because I trust you that much. I want you to love me that much. Bitches will fuck your whole shit up. You can't be giving her at like, it was just like, oh. And just to think, you know, the mentality of men like that and the place that Ace was in, you know, we're surrounded by crime, mafia, just all this, you know, abuse happening, all this interrogation. You know, I'll break your fucking thumbs, chop off your fingers. Don't you ever come in here and try to, you know, shoot craps and not pay for it. You trying to walk out of the casino with some money? What kind of shit is that? You trying to walk in here and finesse the casino, you know, count cars for some money? I'm going to fucking kill you and set an example. Like, we're surrounded by all of that. Like, trust no one. But you trust a ex-hooker who still calls her pimp up on the phone to confirm everything. Stupid. Now, of course, you don't really just think that Ace is the only one fucking up. No, we gotta get into the motherfucker. We have to get into Joe Pesci, Nikki. Nikki is now trying to steal from the casino just to be greedy. And it is a whole recipe for disaster. The fact that he had his own little side hustles, you know, knocking over bookies, shaking down this person, greasing his palms with this and that, it just wasn't enough for him. He wants more power, more control, more say so. He's not asking for permission or waiting for the bosses to give him the right of way to go shake down or kill or knock off somebody. Like, no, I'm doing these things in my own time when I want to do it, hitting up casinos, the whole casino that the bosses are running and owning that I'm supposed to be paying it forward to. No, I'm gonna shake their asses down too and pocket some money just because I want to. And nobody can stop me because I'm Nikki and I do whatever the fuck I wanna do. I don't give a fuck about a black book. I don't give a stick it up your ass. Like I don't care about anything. You know, everything the bosses didn't want him to do. Everyone is supposed to be having a low profile, but Nikki is a hard ass. He takes what he wants, does what he wants, when he wants to do it. You know why? Because who gives a fuck? And nobody's gonna notice anyway. Now, to add insult to injury, we also have Ginger go into a whole downward spiral as if she didn't need therapy already. We're getting into more drugs, spending more money, snorting a little coke, popping some pills, full-blown alcoholic that is just heightened at the fact that it's discovered that she's still funding and talking to Lester by Ace, who loses it, has him beat the fuck up right in front of him, tries to make an example that you can't do this. I don't want you talking to my wife. I don't want you talking to him. Stop acting like a prostitute and let this pimp ass leech go. You don't need him. You're smart. For the most part in this entire film, you really, really see that he really loved Ginger. Ginger never loved him, never wanted that lifestyle, never wanted anything but his money, and it very much shows. Their relationship increases and just gets, you know, more and more toxic, and it all just piles on. But flat out, he really loved and cared for her. He was very sweet to her, you know? Very sweet man. Dumb the sweet but you know we love those moments with joe pesci and just those moments in general in martin scorsese films he has a way of filming you know brutal 
beatings, dance, you know, these slow motion up close blood, this brutality and making it just so good to watch. So when we get to see Nikki do these harsh things or see men in the film, you know, break some thumbs, chop some ears off, just do some sick shit. It's just like, uh, he gets up close and personal with the deaths. Not only that, he has this thing and it really makes his movies, you know, really long winded but it works and you don't really just get tired of it. It does make the movies long, but we sit and we introduce every character. There are no obsolete characters in a Martin Scorsese film. Everybody has a position, an introduction, some lines, a character to play. Everyone is so significant to the storylines. You know, a little quick snippet about them. You see someone murdered, it's intensified, it's angles, it's zoomed. Like, it's very like Martin Scorsese Sazy. He does these things in every single film and it works. Now things really start to fall apart when the boss is no longer wanting anybody scraping off the top. You know, the load is getting too light. We want to get all the money. Also, when a silent investor in the casino shows up, we also have people start to investigate the casino more. More eyes on Sam, illegitimate ass, having no license. Now, at this point, we have had Sam keep changing jobs, which is what he was instructed to do. You don't need a license. Keep, you know, changing your job at the casino. You can be, you know, on goddamn food prep. You can be organizing a goddamn show. You can be the fucking doorman for all we care. Just don't be the owner of the casino. We have a front man for that. They have a front for everything. Everybody is supposed to be in the position and playing their part, but stuff just starts to crumble because people are greedy. We also have Sam and Frank at odds. Sam just wants to get a license and be legit like he wanted to from the start. But Nikki wants and does, kills, knocks off witnesses, like he is killing everybody. On a rant about the suitcases over this FBI wiretap. Like once we got into the wiretaps and the FBI and the feds and all of them watching, it literally just turned into Goodfellas. Like I couldn't help but just think about Goodfellas. Like this is this is I'm so sorry. This is like a sad shell of Goodfellas, which is horrible because these are both good films, but you can't help but make the comparison when watching this film. Like, like, did you even try, Martin? I love what you're doing, but did you even try? This is the same movie. We have all of this going on through the years, and we also have Ginger and Sam, you know, headed for divorce, going through that divorce, and he no longer has that same passion to take care of her for the rest of her life. You look different. She looks different. She's irrational. She's tired. She she's a hot fucking mess she looks bad and she's acting irrational she's an addict she's a junkie and she's running around with lester coked out trying to kidnap her own daughter and hold her for ransom to get money so her and lester can run off to a different country like it's it was just a hot mess like throughout the film i found myself like enjoying her character the most like I enjoyed enjoy the negativity the most because it was so much giving that good fellas vibe I gravitated more towards the things that were different though we do have you know that irrational kind of thing going on with good fellas and their relationship and that whole thing here with Ginger she takes it to a whole nother level like she is something else and it's just it's a goddamn show just to watch her decline. Now, throughout the years with her horrible, irrational, junkie-like behavior, the whole while she has grown closer and closer with Nikki, though he sees her downfall as well. From the beginning, you can tell he wanted her right away and they grow closer. She's kind of dependent on him. He can talk her down. She can talk him down. They're always talking, finding time to be alone and confide in each other or have, you know, their disagreement on their relationship at that moment with Ace. Even though all of that is going on and Ginger is just, oh Lord, he still loves her. 
A still loves her. He doesn't actually want her to leave and she has yet to leave. Even though we're arguing, it's toxic, we're abusive towards each other, she's doing drugs, she's endangering my whole one and only daughter's life. She doesn't actually love. I still don't want her to go. I still don't want her to go. I'm not giving her this money. I'm not giving her that, which is what she was sticking around for. Ginger never had one ounce of care in her bone for Ace. She was sticking around for that jewelry and that two mil that he put into that box. I want that. I want that. And then I'm going to go and I'm never going to see you again. Ginger is so fed up with him. She is fucking and sucking on Nikki. Though they are combative and in disagreement and are sick of each other and what Las Vegas has turned them into, they have been friends for 30 years. But she is sticking around trying to attach herself to him so hopefully he can take down Ace, protect her so she can get her hands on that goddamn jewelry and that money. Ginger was a hot ass mess. Sam is not crazy. He knows what's going on. He's getting more and more inclined to know what she's doing and who she's doing it with. I know it's not Lester. I know it's not a friend. Where are you going? I hope you didn't go and be with who I think you were being with because that means trouble for everybody. Not just because I think you a hoe ass, scandalous ass, trifling ass, thieving ass, bad witch of a mother. It is against code. You can sleep with and do whatever you want to do with whoever you want to do it with. But the mob bosses, the people in job, the people in charge who can have you whacked at any moment's notice. Don't play that sleeping around with the wife shit. So that intensifies everything yet again. But at the end of the day, that really doesn't matter. Nikki created his own self-destruction already. The bosses are tired of the money being light. He's not only skimming off the top, he's just taking everything that's moving in general. He's on coke now, he's lazy, he's running a shitty business. It's always a good time to watch the train wreck. Once we get to the point that, you know, it's kind of like all hope is lost, we know what we are, you know, to each other as friends. We know what a ginger is. And he like pops off because she's low key trying to have him whack. Like, can you just kill him? Can you just, just kill him? It's like, bitch, if you don't get the fuck out of my face. Like I know him for 30 years. You think I'm gonna whack him for you? Get the fuck out. Like that shit is hilarious. And ginger just realizes, you know what? I really don't have anybody. And you just see her just down slash she's you know driving into the house running over ace's car all in the bushes it's just so amazing to see how like well mannered that ace was the entire movie like any other person on a good day would have been choked out ginger and whacked her and thrown her in the bushes but he really loved her but the minute she got her hands on what she always wanted, those keys, those boxes, that jewelry, that money, she was good and she was gone. Now, of course, we end off the film yet again, very good fellas. Like, the jig is up. The feds have come down. You know, in real life and in movies, the feds watch you for years and then they throw down the hammer after they've gotten all their evidence wish they had time to collect. There was no more of, you know, Ace trying to focus and be a legit owner and run the run the club and the casino and the license and the ginger. No, there was no more of Nikki being nonchalant, not giving a flying fuck about a fed watching him. He is just are tying up loose ends, killing everyone who could possibly rat them out. Everybody's getting whacked and buried. Ginger even gets a hot dose and gets overdose. Everyone is getting killed. We even circle back around to Ace being set up and that bomb going off in his car that he happens to survive because of a special metal plate that's underneath his seat. But as we saw, the bosses really liked Ace. They liked what he stood for, they liked what he was about, and most of all, they never felt like he would wrong them and rat anybody out. He gets to live. But who decides to try to set him up to kill him to put that bum in that car? Ace, his once best friend. <sighs> now, 
we get back into you motherfucker we get back into nikki and nikki is you know showing his face again he's trying to get back into the game he's very much been addicted to the game just as much as everybody else i want to be there i want to whack you want to get whacked you don't want to do everything the boss has decided to pay him back for every indiscretion every time you didn't listen every you know money you stole everybody you shook down all your improper practices everything that you've put us through through the years here fuck you fuck your brother we're gonna beat you to death but not kill you we're gonna throw you in a hole alive and let you suffer on top of your brother both of you buried alive a very sad death and then of course we have sam go on betting on the horses as he always did way before he was running the casino if it ain't broke don't fix it he gets to grow old and imagine you know what that strip used to look like it's not that it's disneyland now like you know it's not that organized like people are long gone everything's been knocked down other people have taken control there's still you know vegas there's still that access and that gambling but it's never gonna be like it once was because when it was that we fucked it up and I have to live with that. But for now, I'm gonna bet on the horses and wear my big ass glasses.